Aha, uh -huh. so that was another magic trick. That was two magic tricks. Eh? At least we don't have an echo this time. What is up, guys? Thank you very much for being here. My name is Omar. I'm a host here at Watchers Talk. Coming at you guys from West Coast, British Columbia, Canada, with our Looking Glass saga, which continues with my awesome guest here this afternoon, Agi Nost. I'm sure you guys know who Agi Nost is. He's amazing. He's been around a long time, and he is totally a seed dreamer and always, always raising awareness on a lot of topics. And he's going to raise a little bit of awareness today on the looking glass. And my God, man, what a what an amazing week it's been. And uh, I'm so happy that uh, I uh, put this forward and the awareness that's being raised is just incredible. There's an appetite for this. People want to know. People want to learn. So here we are just uh, moving forward and uh, learning. So we started off with uh, Frank Jacob and then we had uh, Michael Feely and then we had Brad Olson yesterday with Dr. Joan, Joan of Angels. Big shout out to Dr. Joan. And then tomorrow, well, today we have Agi Nost and then tomorrow we have Kiara Windrider and then the day after we have Paul Wallace. And then we are going to have ourselves a panel with all these gentlemen on Saturday, April the 30th at 9 o'clock a.m. PST. And we will conclude our week with that. And what an amazing week it's been so far. What have we learned? We've, uh, you know, we've learned so, so, so much this week. It's just been incredible. So let me uh, just quickly go through, let's say, uh, the show notes here. So one of the biggest things that uh, the awareness was raised on is one, Frank Jacob, he directed the conversation towards consciousness rather than the doom and the gloom which these guys were hoping for, and then thus creating this timeline that uh, they are salivating for. And, uh, and thus Frank came along and he changed the conversation. And here we are just carrying that conversation forward in the art of consciousness so that we can create our own timeline because we will not do what they tell us. So this is a Sumerian tech. Uh, it's been around for tens of thousands of years, uh, discovered in Iraq, uh, in the first uh, Gulf War, and then they went back in the second one, recovered some more things. Um, you know, there's like 50 some odd of these things around the planet, the elites, the banksters, the politicians, uh, the business leaders, all of those people that were using it to favor their own timelines. Uh, it is a Stargate as well. Uh, Frank was telling us you can put like these J rods into them and you can travel from one spot to another spot, even interdimensionally, even to different timelines. Uh, what else have we learned? Um, the uh, Blue Apples document of timeline convergence. That was pretty cool. The Holy Grail, the Vatican, the coronavirus, or not the... Uh, <laughs> the you guys know the uh, coronavisor, right? Uh, it's kind of hard. Uh, that's a tough one to, to pronounce that one <laughs> without getting in some shit, right? Uh, the, um, the Vatican had it, and uh, they were able to peer back in time, and uh, these, uh, I guess, American gener generals had asked uh, there were Christian men and said, okay, let's see. And uh, they went back and viewed this grainy image of uh, whatever it is that they saw. And uh, it uh, really stood the hairs up on their uh, necks and uh, it can even go deeper. And then, um, you know, the, the CERN, HARP, the Hedron Collider, um, you know, there's a lot of that. And as well here, let me share a link with you guys and that, um, okay. And the greater treaty before I do that, the greater treaty, it's ratified on the fourth year of every decade. So coming up in 2024, you guys guessed it, who's going to be in charge and this greater treaty, I've been reading about it and it doesn't sound very, uh, fair. It seems that, um, you know, ET is uh, getting the upper hand here. I guess there was another group of people that had offered Eisenhower uh, technology where we can get rid of our nukes and they would help us. And then he said no, because he wanted to keep the nukes. And then he made a deal with the Greys instead. He took off in the middle of the night, said he had a dentist appointment and he took off. He went somewhere and then he got into a craft and uh, the craft took off. I guess there was three of them. One was parked, one was hovering, and there was another one that was 
kind of patrolling off to the side. He got into one of them and they left and they came back and there was a treaty signed. But it makes you wonder on how legal that treaty is because it didn't go through the senators, you know, things like that. So it's not really a legal treaty. And I guess these ETs have the right to grab us anytime they like. Uh, they have uh, underground bases uh, that they work through. And uh, it is uh, it's quite deep. And this is kind of just the logists of uh, my notes that I have here. Also, the 2012 London Olympics, the opening, uh, you know, creating a timeline. And uh, there's also, you know, there's something also that I would like to discuss at some point in this week is the uh, Bible Code, uh, which is written by Michael Drosnin, uh, secret messages encoded within the Hebrew text of the Torah. So I wonder, the you know, the people that wrote these scriptures, if they you know didn't have that technology themselves or had access to it and they were able to look into the future and then encode that message in within the scriptures or these older texts that uh, came down from the uh, Sumerians and the Anunnaki and kind of what have you. So that is the um, you know the logists of what we've learned so far this week and we're going to probably learn a lot lot more and of course. After all this is done, I'm going to try my best to turn this into a documentary and uh, post that out there on the internet world as well. So, Agi, thank you very much, brother, for being here with me this afternoon and uh, coming here to share your wisdom, your knowledge on this looking glass, because it seems to be kind of a thing right now. I saw a comment yesterday that said, uh, you know, why is everyone talking about uh, this uh, looking glass uh, suddenly when this technology has been around for a very long time? And I guess one of the things would be the catalyst would be the video that was released by the guardians of the looking glass. Uh, like, I guess about a month ago, a month and a half ago, back in March, they said that there was going to be some kind of an event, false flag event in New York on April the 18th, and uh, we needed to spread the word so that uh, it couldn't happen because they were looking for that problem reaction solution. And as we know, something did happen in uh, New York. There was a shooting. 29 people were injured. And uh, so they're saying that, um, you know, this false flag attack was thwarted, so it didn't happen, and the timeline kind of just remains. And they released another video, I guess, and within those videos, there are codes that, um, that people need to look for, and there's an amulet that is, um, you know, the information was in the last video, and I'll share those links while Augie is speaking. And in that video, I guess you can crack this code and there's an amulet in there. And that amulet was held by uh, Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus. And, uh, and this amulet is somewhere on the planet and it needs to be found. So, you know, I don't know about all of that. You know, personally, what I do understand is the timelines and uh, what these guys are talking about. You know, I'm not really, you know, I can't seem, kind of seem to wrap my head around it. Maybe it's my programming that's kicking in. Uh, I'm not really quite sure. But, you know, I do know that we need to create a new timeline because this is something that I've been working towards for the past uh, three years uh, with my Solstice Winter events with uh, Stephen and Evan Strong, Uluru. You guys are all aware of what I've been doing. And in fact, this entire year is dedicated to that. So this kind of goes with the Hopi prophecy as well, where well, the Anasazi and the Hopi, where they were saying that time will come when people will have to make a choice. And that choice is if you make the right choice, you go on the road of abundance. If you make the wrong choice, it's going to be disaster and kind of what have you. So this whole you know, looking glass kind of falls into the line with that. So to answer to Greg, it was his question yesterday, is the reason why I'm doing it is to, you know, carry forward the work that I've been doing for the past three years. But not only that, but to raise awareness on the fact that this could possibly be happening. And as many people are aware of this, the better it is, because, you know, it's just better that way. <laughs> okay, I'm done, Agi. It's your turn. <laughs> I just wanted no, to give no, a quick no. set wrap of what's been happening this whole week. <laughs> no, you, you sounded good there. I, I love listening to this stuff. That this is uh, it's more of the things that we need to know about, and not just know it once. 
we need to hear it again and again and again before it sinks in sometimes so uh, that's why I, I, I had my ears all around you there because this is the kind of stuff that we got to concentrate on and the more we hear it it sinks in and we start reacting to it that's how the mind works just like a good salesperson first time tell someone tell you no it's irrelevant you got to ask for the order three times before somebody buys and we're doing the same thing we got it when we know something in our heart we know it to be true it's our responsibility to talk about it it's not our responsibility for anybody to accept it or do anything with it that's on them but it is our responsibility to help enlighten others by talking to them about things we know are true that's right especially when we have a platform such as broadcast team alpha watchers talk full spectrum universe riding the frequency you know joan of angels things like that you know when you have a platform where you have a lot of people converging as a community yeah. then it really becomes your responsibility to you know talk about these types of things and share the knowledge and because we have connections right that you know most people in the audience wouldn't because we're always talking to people and meeting this person that person so we come across information and if we weren't sharing that then we'd be actually negligent towards yeah. our own responsibility to our platform and to the community that follows that platform yeah if we uh, if we don't do anything uh, what i'm concerned i would be sleeping on the job <laughs> <laughs> you're right <laughs> yeah <laughs> because it is our responsibility to help what is happening because it is going in our direction and that of guess uh, that brings us to what we probably should talk about the timelines and that's exactly yeah. what we did, aren't we Augie? so go ahead but i'll hit you up in like 20 minutes and uh guys when you got uh questions toss them into the uh comments mm -hmm. and i'll ask uh, Augie. and yes uh leanne i got your question and big john i will also ask your question i forgot my apologies it's about uh apophis so remind me again but i won't forget so go ahead Augie. Yeah, okay. All right. I'll uh, I guess we <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about a couple of things. Um the looking glass it's more like maybe a little newer than the chronovisor that the Catholic Church created. And uh, you mentioned also about the treaty that was done with the extraterrestrial. It may not be a lawful treaty. Well, no, because first of all the treaty was made for on our behalf a treaty is a contract between two parties with full disclosure i wasn't told about that there was no disclosure on my part but the treaty as such is probably legal but not lawful because there's huge difference between legal and lawful so uh, some of you out there may have some comments on that at um, because anything that will be taken in front of Congress now in regard to that treaty, it would be overturned because it wasn't lawful to do what he did. He was pressured into it. And that's probably all I should say about that. Maybe Laura Eisenhower has some more things to say about that. But when it comes to the looking glass knowing the future having electronic equipment that can actually show us the future that sounds ridiculous why in the world would anybody believe that ask anybody out on the street go out on the street and ask them do you believe that there could possibly be electronic equipment that can tell us what the future is going to be well <clears throat> when they're done picking themselves up off the payment from almost laughing themselves to death and then looking at you like you had two fingers on the right hand and eight on the left one and you had only one eye you were really a strange character that is what joe blow and harry ho handle have in their mind 
because they're watching CNN and other brainwashing operations. But then again, there may be another avenue. Let me give you an example. There was a guy named Ben Rich. He was the, the chief of the Lockheed Skunk Works. And in an interview, he said, and I wrote it down because I wanted to read it to you because I want to quote this. He said, we know how to take E.T. home and it would not take a lifetime to do it. We already have the means to travel among the stars but these technologies are locked up in black projects and it would take an act of God to ever get them out to benefit mankind. How about that? Now, he also said, if you have seen it on TV and on Star Trek, we already know how to do it. And he said, there is an error in the equations, and we know what it is. What he was talking about, the equations, that is the ones that deal with quantum mechanics back in the uh, 1978 or so when he made that statement. What's his name again? Oh, say again? What's his name again? Oh, that Ben Rich. Ben Rich. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And if we take those statements and roll them into a conceptual idea of what is possible, can you imagine what would be possible? Now, let's only take 10% of that. If 10% of what you can possibly imagine by watching Star Trek and other things that open your mind up, if only 10% was possible, it would move us ahead decades ahead of what we are today. So, there's more. There's another guy I want to tell you about. <clears throat> And I'm going to read that statement, too. Uh, he was the, uh, the head of the CIA under Ronald Reagan, and that was William Casey. And he said in an interview at the very tail end of it also, when we find that everything the American public believes is false, then we know our disinformation program is working. Mm-hmm. I've heard that. Yeah. So now, can you imagine the government actually telling you anything that is true? No, they're not in that business. No. <laughs> they will never do that. No, they made bits and pieces of stuff here. People tell you, I used to have a reward out on my TV show in Tucson here. But anybody that can tell me something that the government said that is true, I'll pay you, pay you $1,000. Nobody ever challenged me. Oh, and one, guy, one guy came in one time and said, yeah, the sky is blue. <laughs> I mean, and I turned it around on him and I said, is it blue? Space is black. And he went with that. It probably saved me because some people will believe the sky is blue. But it isn't blue all the time. And space is black. So <clears throat> the governments are not in the business of telling us the truth. So uh, if we think about that, I am totally open to the fact that we do have electronic equipment that can show us the future like the looking glass and the chronovisor. We may have alien species of being walking around us, looking like us, and we will never know it. There may be bases on Mars, bases on the moon. We have a secret space program. I am totally open to these things. 
for a couple of reasons. First of all, they are very credible people that has come out and said, yes, there he is. Mm -hmm. And also some of the things that I've seen on my own. So <clears throat> what I am looking at what comes out of the, uh, <clears throat> the <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, looking glass and uh, other uh, sources, the future is going to be good because we have a way to create our own future by the way what we think, what we believe, what we visualize into existence and place it in the future, our intentions, our emotion, our gratitude for already having it, not just physical yet, but it, you feel it. When we started using that, what I call spiritual language, we create a bubble of or a concept of something that we want. We place that in the future at a time coded event. And now we go back and visit that thing every day. That creates a timeline to it. And when we go back up that timeline, it's going to get us to that spot that we created and placed in the future. This is very possible and quantum mechanics actually back me up in much of that statement. Now the looking glass has a way to look at these things. It's an old technology that uh, was given to the uh, Sumerians several thousands, probably many thousands of years ago. And it was still there. And there were people that started to work on this before that the United States got their hand on the coronavirus here back in when they started the wars with uh, Saddam Hussein. But it was perfected much more after that. There was also, uh, what they found there was uh, a stargate which have the capabilities to doing the same thing as a looking glass would. And by finding the stargate and figuring that thing out, they were able to apply some of that technology to the um, chronovisor, uh, I mean the, the looking glass, and make it work better. It took about 40 years or so to create the uh, the uh, the looking glass and uh, it's it was said that Nikola Tesla worked on it uh, I don't think he worked on it I think he gave them ideas and maybe equations and things that they could apply in order to solve the challenge they were working on because uh, he died in 1930 uh, no in 43 I think it was 1943. So if they started working on this in the early 40s, he was pretty much, um, he was pretty old and very busy feeding his pigeons by them. So he was uh, a little bit out of that arena by then. Mm -hmm. But there were others that worked on it. Einstein did work on it uh, from up here. Werner von Braun worked on it. And there were other people that was... Um, uh, very much involved in, uh, you know, developing the atomic bomb and things like that. They were very sharp people that worked on it. Now, Nikola Tesla is said to have withdrawn from the project because chances are he found out what they wanted to use it for. And he was, uh, you know, a principled man. So he decided not to give them any more information. Mm -hmm. Now, Einstein, on the other hand, may... <laughs> may not have been as principled and he continued i don't know that exactly what they told them mm -hmm. now uh, before this, majestic 12 right yeah yeah, okay. yeah they uh, they were very much involved in it also i uh, i haven't studied their involvement in the uh, looking glass much so mm -hmm. i don't know they probably had some oversight yeah and like maybe in this they killed one yeah. of their own people that uh, I guess tried to whistleblow. Uh, mm -hmm. In my notes. Yep, absolutely. 
Yeah, and uh, now at this time they uh, have this nuke looking. They have actually at least two of them that we know of, and uh, the one of them is at S4 in the Nevada desert up by Groom Lake, and uh, it is deep in the ground. It is said to be at the level four dash two, whatever that means. I imagine it's the fourth level down, in a place they call Alice's Floor because they do some really strange things there, like creating entities or creating beings out of nothing and creating things in the future that later on they can catch up with and have advantage of having there. And they, uh, they uh, have also experiments on people and things like that, uh, that gets pretty negative, so I'm not even going to go there. This, this uh, looking glass, it looked like a big, the major portion of it looked like a big donut, and it, actually exactly like a donut, round, but also round this way with a hole in the middle. And, <clears throat> and uh, it rotates this way, and that way at the same time okay, inside like an say again kind of like an atom um yeah that's possible i think the atoms now have been proven to be a little different there's mm -hmm. not much spinning around anymore they found now it's just pulsating mm -hmm. but, um for this it was in an inside of an electromagnetic barrel and it was spinning very fast, probably relating some of the principles that the German Nazi bell was created of. Because that also created an electromagnetic electromag magnetic bubble around it that created an anti-gravity envelope, which gravity was not able to exert anything from the outside everything inside had no weight and i believe that is possibly inside this one also i don't think it has been talked about that but when i look at the technology i see some similarities so maybe somebody later could uh, visit that one but also they found that the operator's mind was very much involved on what they could see or what they could do with it now, uh, they did some experiments, and one of them was there were several very religious Christians that uh, did one experiment first time, and they tried to view the crucifixion of, they called him Jesus, which because, no, that wasn't his name, but either way, and they saw it happen on the, in, in that pool that cre it's created inside the, uh, the looking glass. And they saw it happen. Then again, they did other experiments with total atheists that had no clue, had no interest whatsoever in the issue. They didn't see a thing. And there were others that said they saw, yes, he was, they did unspeakable thing to us, but he survived. So they did several experiments on this, and they had different results. So we see that what is in the operator's mind had very clear results in what the outcome came to be. So um, that tells us also that was the past. What if this could be applied to the future? That could turn out interesting, couldn't it? Because then we could create the future that we want to have before we have to live it physically. And uh, <coughs> we technically create the future before we even get there so we just walk into it and we find also that there are 
several timelines that goes into the future from the present and also from the past passing by us parallel to us that futures that we created while we were back in the past one of those future timelines pass through the present and on into the future one or many of those timelines we created in the past passing right by us and we will you will never know that they even existed because we made changes to those timelines somewhere along the path before the present so we ended up going off in a different direction in those timelines but later on they found out with the looking glass that all those timelines they have similarities built into it so these similarities start joining together some of those timelines are coming together and they start merging on a point and i am not so sure that you have any date stamp on that point some people say it's 2030 i personally think it is sooner than that because of some of the things that i have seen could happen i somewhere along this line the timelines are coming together into the same occasion and that may be while the people that run those programs and the mj12 and the other people that think they run the world and own it it scared the daylight out of them because they did not like what ended up happening in at that point in time when the timelines come together now there's two schools of thought on that too there's um, someone that think that the rulers of the world i guess i should call them they have everything working their way in their timeline everything work out for them they get the new world or world order established and they have a totally locked down tyrannical communist society globally that's what they want yeah and we see that in the play right now that they're trying to do all over the planet we see that we've been yes. part of that yeah very good point now they uh, they're talking about a, a catastrophic event in the future catastrophic event for who <laughs> a catastrophic event for them would be like the raising of consciousness so we become more telepathic we find out everything we have been told pretty much is a lie now that would be a catastrophic event for them oh yeah they're they're afraid of that because they Not know right. that all, they know that all those timelines converge into one that favors humanity and they just can't deal with it and then this is what they're doing right now for the last little yep. while absolutely and for them that will be a catastrophic event but for us it's not so when they're talking about a catastrophic event we have to ask for who now if it was a catastrophic event for us i don't think they would try to stop it because right now they're in the deep in the process of reducing population of earth to 800 million people mm -hmm. so they would say wonderful let the catastrophic event happen that'll save us some work yeah and they never let a good disaster yeah oh <laughs> they never <laughs> ever right they'd be all over it <laughs> yeah so uh, i think that since they are talking about a catastrophic event it is one that they talk about for themselves the catastrophic event is that our consciousness is rising and we're figuring out the lies and there is restitution coming which means they could be having some yeah challenges with restitution 
you can let your mind go wild on that one. I have several times and I enjoyed every second of it. If we, uh, if we look at this, so that is another reason why I am not worried about the future at all. Mm -hmm. Because on the mastermind connection that Nori and I have put together, we're doing this every Sunday. We are going, we create the future the way we want it to be. And we place it in the future at a time-coded event. And we go visit it every day for some of us and at least every week for many of us. So our future has that good stuff in it. And everybody should do that. We create a mastermind. A mastermind that could be anybody, two or more people. In fact, with one person, you can create a mastermind because you can tap into the universal consciousness, and that would create the mastermind for you. A family should create a mastermind. Find out what do they want. And then start concentrating on football no, teams. Do it all the time. That's a great idea, Algi. I love that. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah, yeah. Never even thought about that. Amazing. Absolutely. Every every family should do that. Football teams do it. Basketball team do it. Uh, Olympic teams. They definitely do it because they talk about doing it. And communities, churches, countries. In, in 2016, we actually did that. There was a mastermind by the whole United States that was sick of all the corruption, and that's why things changed. So, uh, yeah, that is, this is something that is, it will happen. And there is, uh, <clears throat> we're finding out that everything we say, we think, we do, is recorded in the fabric of space. That is why the looking glass and the uh, chronovisor are able to find these recordings in the fabric of space. When we say the fabric of space, if you look at fabric, what is it? It's kind of lines this way. If you look at, uh, you know, cloth, it has thread going that way and that way and they're very tight together yeah it's a fabric space has the same thing Nikola Tesla found this he said that ever so often every 20 I think it was 22 feet or so there is a line going an electromagnetic line they're called ley lines and then every there's smaller lines between the big ones and the fabric of space records everything you say and do and place it along those ley lines. So when they fire up the looking glass, it finds the ley lines and let the information, the request for information flying down there and bringing back what is already recorded. Just like your brain, the neural network in the brain has memories deposited all the way down the neurons. And when you want something, the, the request for it runs down the neuron, just like in a computer. It runs down, find it, and bring it back to you. That's what the brain does. That's what a computer does. That's what the looking glass does. It runs down the ley lines, find the information and bring it back in pictures and voice. And uh, it shows up in the pool. Now the uh, chronovisor, that was a little different. They used a TV screen on that, but they were also able to retrieve information and pictures from the uh, okay called matrix and for the people 
for the people that read the Bible and uh, believe in that. It's a good book. I absolutely recommend to read it. You remember that, that one guy that said, in my father's house, there is many rooms. Michael Feely, two days ago. Yeah, okay. What if he was referring to levels of existence by separated by vibration and also timelines? Oh, wow. Never thought about it like that, Augie. That's incredible. Yeah. That's a really, really deep way to look at it. Really makes a lot what, of sense too. What else can it be? Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking about that. That's really profound, actually. I gotta write that down. Yeah. So when we think about that, we can create our own timelines by what we think and what we do and what we envision and feel. Place it in the future. And then we go back and forth and visit it. And it draws us up that timeline to that thing that we place in the future. And I just can't help it. I got to say that again, because remember, you got you to hear it three times before it sink in, right? So the chronovisor is a little different. And um, I think that the chronovisor, that was started... Uh, uh, about around maybe around 1960 I don't really know but it was commissioned by the Catholic Church because uh, Father Ernetti I guess his name was he was uh, transcribing uh, written material into cassette not cassette tapes but the reels back then I remember having one of those big one you know and uh, then uh, at uh, there were a little bit later one other uh, the the one that ran the monster he was reviewing some of these things to find if there was any errors in it uh, that guy's name was uh, uh, Augustino Gamelli and he found that at the tail end of a tape there was somebody else's voice on there and it was his father. But the problem was his father had been dead for many years, but that was his father. So how could that be? And he got to think about this. Uh, he got with uh, and, uh, Ernetti and they thought about it. So maybe there's some science to this. Let's investigate and see if we can replicate it. So they put together a group of people and uh, some of the sharpest minds at the time. And uh, some of them, uh, there was uh, Fermi, he was a nuclear physicist way, way back. And uh, Werner von Braun, Oppenheimer, which, you know, he was the father of atomic bomb and some of the sharpest people. Now, Brunet actually also worked on it. And in 2002, this is good. He wrote a book about how they created the chronovisor and what it could do. And the book is called The Vatican's New Mystery. And you can buy it on Amazon. I bet you're going to like that. Because this one explains what they went through and who was involved. And he, uh, I have not read the book. I have seen it, but I haven't read it. So uh, this might spur me into actually getting that thing. Is it new mysteries or nude mysteries? Uh, from what I heard, I think it said the Vatican's new mystery. Okay. And uh, this coronavirus that was in a large cabinet, it had dials on it and levers on it and then antenna. And, and then there was a TV screen that could show you what you actually were looking for. And you could tune it by the dial, somewhat similar probably to a radionic computer because that I'm very favorable, I mean, uh, familiar with. Because I used to have a Mark 12 made by the Copen Labs and we did some amazing things with that thing. And here they could probably also tune it to a time and a location. 
at least that's what they're saying they did so uh, they found the what the, what they were looking for as a residue deposit in the ley lines and then they went and got it and brought it back out and uh, you know the future is based mostly on potentials of existence based on the energy that fueled it from the present not just your present but also other minds that interact with you at the time that you create that future beyond that also the universal mind or the universal consciousness also have a little bit of say in that because there are some things that you may create for yourself but if you if it was not in your master plan that you agreed to before you took on this meat suit and walking around here for a hundred years or so if it wasn't in that plan you may not be able to get it though there are people that probably have done that because they've had near-death experiences and talked about the fact that Oh boy, I came back and now I realize I was on a totally wrong path. I didn't come here for this. So they went and did something different. So there is accidents everywhere, I guess. And uh, <clears throat> now we have quantum computers. They can do a lot of these things. And um, in fact, also uh, the... Um, the people that put together the uh, coronavirus, they went and they, they had a look at the crucifixion of Jesus. But they also looked at other things. And uh, there is in, um, I wrote it down here, in May 2nd, 1972, in the issue of the Italian magazine, La Domenica del Corre. I think Corre is uh, C O R R I. E R E, Corriere. I guess they may they make pronounce it Corriere. Now that in that magazine you can find it, and then use Google Translate and you can read it. It's a very interesting article when they talk about what they saw, on several other things that they have seen. So um, you can have a look at that. Now, later on, they said that they dismantled the coronavirus because they were afraid that it could fall into the wrong hands and be abused. Yeah. Knowing a little bit about the Catholic Church, I can make another statement that is probably just as accurate, and that is that my <laughs> name is Cleopatra. There is no way, yeah, there you go. There is no way they would dismantle something that they had the power to do what they said they did. Yeah, no way. <laughs> There's no way. There's the dials that you were talking about, Agi, that uh, they can put in and kind of oh, looks like, uh, what do you, what's that movie, Back to the Future? Yeah. Right, and so makes yeah. me kind of think now if back to the future was kind of based on the looking glass on how they can go back and change time and you know it's pretty interesting yeah. now that Absolutely. I think of it. They talk, and they talked about things that will happen in the future i do not think they understood the different timeline concept mm -hmm. because they they never really talked about that they talked about this is what will happen well yeah in this timeline but what if somebody peel off to the right and go another timeline things may not happen the same way and uh, when you talk to people on the street about stuff like this uh, remember something that einstein said I, I wrote this down because it was so good i just have to say it he said the thing about smart people they sound crazy to dumb people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, I guess uh, 
you probably have some questions there too. There's more that could be said. About, yes, there you go. There he is. This guy's is uh, Father. Uh, probably gonna mess his name up here. Uh, Pellegrino Arnetti. Yeah, Pellegrino. Yeah, and this was uh, back in the fifties. Is when this started. I just uh, shared a, a wonderful link in yeah. the uh, comments in uh, describing this. And uh, yeah, lots of questions, Augie. I got I got tons of questions. I got three days worth okay, of questions, just, but you don't have to bring them on. We answer. got ten, three days worth ten of minutes here. Okay, so let me let me go to one of the uh, questions that I received on uh, on my chat on uh, on on one of my chat apps. It's from uh, Big John, and uh, Big John. Let me queue it up. I got it right here. Oh, I guess I did have it there. Um, <laughs> Anyway, if I don't, uh, know, the answer, if I don't yeah, know the answer, I'll tell you. Big John was talking about um, Apophis that's coming in 2029, and they're not talking about it. And uh, he wants to know if that has anything to do with the Project Looking Glass here. So here it is. It goes, uh, yesterday's talk was interesting. I watched the original talk with Bill Ryan. And Kerry Cassidy, back in 08, I think my issue is now, they say that they could see up to 2030. It was 2012 back then. And please ask about April 2029 Apophis near-Earth asteroid, which is a huge event and is being ignored by most. And why? Well, it is ignored because nobody wants to talk about it. When they ran the numbers the first time, they say, yeah, it's going to be safe. It'll be way out there going right by. But they refigured the numbers, and the numbers are not good. They're talking either a hit or they're talking in near with, inside of the moon. That's not pretty that close. Cool. Wouldn't that, from the size of it, wouldn't that, like, mess with our stratosphere and uh, atmosphere and kind of what have you and try to strip it off like kind of something similar to what may have happened to Mars but of course I think on Mars is something different but it could be yeah yeah I uh, I <clears throat> wasn't going to talk about this but um, if something like that were to happen this this particular asteroid is big enough to be a planet killer Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> we don't want it to hit. I but on the other hand, kind of on connected the other, to that. I mean, th think of this too. We have help in the sky. There are other civilizations out there looking out for us. Mm -hmm. I do not believe, even if it is on a trajectory that will hit, I do not believe they would allow that because we have come so far and we are so close now to race into a higher vibration where we become a galactic community. Mm -hmm. I don't think they would allow it to happen. Do you think these solar flashes that we're getting that's coming off the sun? I know it's routine. It happens like, what is it, a cycle of 11 years, right? Every 11 years, there's like a solar storm. Uh, do you think the solar flashes that we're getting today may be assisting in the ascension of human consciousness by, you know, charging up our atmosphere, charging up our planet, and then that's just kind of charging us up as well, like a, you know, hosting a car kind of deal? No, I don't think the solar flashes have anything to do with the racing of vibration. Uh, it may possibly, maybe a little more about education. Mm -hmm. But the racing of vibration comes from our trip around the great circle, 26,000 years, actually 25,980 uh, or something. It's very yeah. close to 26,000. And when we are getting to this one particular spot in space around the great circle in the galaxy, there is a spike coming out from the center central sun that we are passing through that spike is raising our vibration some mm -hmm. people call that one this photon belt uh okay it is light so i guess they call it that but uh, that is what's raising our vibration 
and we're getting in it now when we are passing through it we that are uh, the if we are aware we will arise to that higher vibration and we'll stay there but the ones that aren't that is all uh, the scuzz buckets on the world then they're going to be left behind so um, <laughs> and that's fine i I'm, i don't care if they're family or friends or anybody if they are, don't stack up then they can take another 26,000 years and give a shot again. Yeah, I feel the same way. You can take a horse to water, <clears> but you can't <throat> force it to drink, right? Um, no. You know, that's why I like seed dreaming, where you just uh, drop a seed and just keep on going. And if that seed uh, flourishes, then it flourishes. Then if not, then not. Uh, then not. Okay, I know, Augie, you got to run. So uh, let me hit you with this final question from Bill Van Horn. Yeah. Um, she says, uh, Augie, any thoughts on the relationship between scurrying and looking glass technology? Scrying? Is that how you pronounce it? Scrying and looking glass technology? I don't know what scrying is. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is either. Bill, maybe you can uh, elaborate on, yeah. this, um, on what this uh, scrying is. And uh, okay, so while we're waiting for Bill to uh, do that, I won't uh, go any further. <laughs> Uh, with any more questions because I got you on the uh, panel on Saturday and I know you have to run got to be across town in a half an hour so before I let you go tell our audience where they can find you and uh, what you have coming up next if you have any guests I know you got some shows coming up with uh, yeah. Tomorrow, so yeah. give us a download on that and then we'll call it a day yeah I uh, this last uh, Tuesday now we just put that up uh, that was an interview with the uh, uh, well, we were talking about life after death. Raymond Moody was on, and that was a phenomenal education on what we could find after we dropped the body. And uh, I also wrote this book, The Spiritual Science, Higher Conscious Thinking, and How to Access the Universal Consciousness. I talk about how to tap into the universal consciousness through meditation and the conditioning of the mind and things like that. And uh, I guess to simplify it is I teach people how to use their mind in ways that they normally would think would be impossible. Mm -hmm. I like that. So, yeah. And there it's on Amazon and, uh, you know, broadcast team alpha under the products and stuff. So, and also, you guys can go to uh, AugieNoss.com as well, Augie-Noss.com. Uh, that's Augie's uh, personal website. And then BroadcastTeamAlpha.com is um, everything else, like his show and podcasts okay. and uh, other media that uh, Augie is involved in. And, uh, of course, subscribe to uh, Augie's uh, YouTube channel, right? And uh, hit that bell because that bell... Is. Oh, Broadcast Team Alpha on YouTube. It's uh, That's where Nori and I put all our shows on there. Yeah. Be sure to uh, subscribe to that. Okay, my brother, I know you have to run, and uh, I'm going to catch up with you on on questions because, I, like I said, I've got three days' worth of questions for you, and uh, and we have the panel coming up here in, uh, in a couple of days, so we'll have a good talk there. You wanted to say something. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that uh, if somebody gets that book, I am totally available to my readers. I get emails from people all the time when they have questions and when they, uh, I did this and this happened. Uh, I got out of the body and I look back at myself and there I am still laying in bed. And now what do I do? You know, the, I, I teach people how to do stuff in there like that. So um, I'm available and uh, with questions and anything that you would need. Awesome. Thank you very much, Augie. And uh, everyone else is saying thank you. Lots to think about. Uh, yeah, indeed, we have lots to think about. And uh, this was another great installment in our Looking Glass series. And uh, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, Pacific Standard Time, California time, I have with me Kiora Windrider. And uh, we are going to be talking about the same thing about uh, Project Looking Glass. I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, Kiora's uh, intake on this as well because uh, you know I read a letter that he sent out and uh, he's on the same level as we are as to where he feels that uh, you know we're going to ascend and we're going to become one and it's going to be you know one society one humanity 
and these days of war and stuff is going to be uh, behind us and long behind us. So I'm rolling with that form of our timeline. So with that being said, guys, thank you very much. And uh, if you guys want to uh, get more links on Augie, go to my website, a projection of you.com. And I have a whole profile set up on Augie there. And all of his links are there, his book links and uh, Agenda 21 documentary he did, uh, you know, just uh, all kinds I have there. So go and uh, check that out. So I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Please uh, give this video a like and a share. And after this is over, if you guys can quickly jump down into the comments and uh, drop me a comment, that would be great because that helps uh, the algorithm send this video out. And the whole point of doing this entire week is to raise awareness and to get the word out as much as we can. So that would be greatly appreciated. So my name is Omar coming at you guys from West Coast, British Columbia, Canada. I'm a host here at Watchers Talk. Love you guys very much. I appreciate you guys. Be safe, be well, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Yep. Don't forget to uh, download this Favors app. Uh, speaking of timelines, before I hit end broadcast, uh, the Favors, Favors uh, app, guys. I've uh, put the link in the uh, comments, and it's a free app. And it is a, uh, you know, a timeline changing type of uh, app that we're vibrating with, because if you need a favor, you can go onto the app, drop it in there that you need a favor and somebody in your city or in your area has the ability to carry that out for you. They will. And uh, we're trying to make this uh, app go global. And uh, so um, give it a download on Apple or from Google. OK.